Hey everybody, what is up? Gary Simon here. So today I'm going to show you exactly how to create this from scratch with the help of Midjourney AI. So we're going to use Midjourney to generate this graphic right here. And then we're also, I'm going to also show you some tips for how to fine tune it and control it both within Midjourney as well through the Discord interface, but also through Photoshop, which has its own suite of AI generative tools. We're not really going to use them, but we are going to use Photoshop to kind of just make the pictures perfect for our purposes. And so you can see another concept here, kind of just uh, with a, a different variation and just how cool these images can really work to assist you in your web designs. So let's go ahead and get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. All right, so we're gonna pretend that we're creating a hero section for a fictional business that has to do with shoes, okay? So what I'm gonna do is issue a prompt here um, in Discord, communicated to Midjourney. If that means nothing to you, make sure you, you go to YouTube and you type in Midjourney tutorial. But basically this is how we generate the AI's uh, images and how we communicate with it. So we type in imagine, which is the prompt, and then we put in a description of some sort based on the image that we want. So here, I'm gonna put something like um, giant neon shoe inside of dark warehouse AR 16.9 because I want to have a 16 by 9 representation kind of for like a large desktop so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter it's gonna take about you know 30 seconds or so for this to generate and then we'll take a look at the results all right so these are awesome I could tell already so let's take a look at these and let it load come on Come on. Okay, there we go. So yeah, I really like all these. Um, I think I like this one the most. I don't want to use the Nike symbol, probably get canceled or copyright striked or whatever. So we'll use this one. Um, and we don't want it to be an exact, I don't want it to be an exact center because I do want to have enough room for a headline um, and one that's not really, you know, on top of the shoe, so to speak. So we want to get it pushed off to the right. And there's a few different ways we can do this. So um, what the first thing we need to do is to choose which one that we like the most. And this goes one, two, three, four. So this is number three. Now we can get variations of three by clicking this, but we just want to, we want to click on this one and then so that we have access to the zoom tools so that we can kind of zoom out, so to speak. So what I'll do is just zoom out. Um, let's try 1.5x. And this usually goes pretty quickly when I click on these. We can also zoom out 2x as well at the same time, just so that we could see if one is better than the other. Okay, and here are the results. So this is one um, that is zoomed out by 1.5x. And then this one is zoomed out by 2x. You can see the shoe is much smaller, but the environment is larger, which could afford us more room. Um, so I kind of like this one right down here, um, number three. So if I look at number three um, and I hit the up res, now when you up res it, it goes quite a bit quicker, uh, as you can see here. And then um, we can choose to upscale 2x or 4x. I'm gonna click on 2x. All right, and there we go. So now I'm gonna click on it, and I'm just going to copy it real quick with my screenshot tool. And we're gonna head into, before we get to Figma, we're gonna head into um, the Photoshop. All right, so let me get this up. Now I'm using the beta. I don't really have to since they've released the generative AI stuff. I don't necessarily think I'm gonna use it, but I wanted to open this up uh, so that we can make an adjustment. All right, so this is the image that we have. And what we can do is I wanna kinda of get it pushed off to the right side so that we have space kind of essentially for um, our headline, its subheadline, et cetera. So there's a few different ways that we could approach this. Um, you know, I could just take the um, rectangular marquee tool and get out of here, I don't wanna update. Screw off, and it won't even let me click on it, so that's awesome, thanks a lot. Anyhow, okay, so now um, I'm gonna do a edit, uh, content aware um, 
scale you could do. So if I just take this, hold shift, and move it over, it's not gonna distort the image here too bad. You could do that. And I think that looks pretty good right there. All right, so what I'll do is just copy this, and I'm going to head into uh, Figma, and I have a 1920 by 1080 frame already established here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that right in. All right, so um, somewhere probably, yeah, maybe right around here will work pretty well. I, if I select this again, I kind of do want to get access to the bottom, and I'll show you why in a second. And what I mean by the bottom is getting the bottom of the Im image right up against the bottom edge of the frame. So if I pull the frame down, we'll kind of see what that looks like underneath. And we kind of want to make sure this is blended seamlessly underneath, which is the look I want to go for. And to do that, so what I'll do is select the, the frame itself and then hit I, and we'll get a color like that right there. Now we can still see this cutoff, and there's different ways that we could approach this in terms of trying to seamlessly get it, you know, uh, looking good. Once, and I'm gonna show you a few of the ways. So one such way is we could take a rectangle, overlay it on top, maybe right around here, and then um, use a gradient and the gradient, let's reverse these, there we go. Um, the color stop uh, initial one should be this color. Uh, actually, we'll flip that again. All right, and the top one will be that color as well, except we're going to reduce the opacity like this. Then what we could do is just take this and bring this up, and now we have kind of like a fade off effect where it's just a nice gradient and you can adjust the height of this gradient as you wish, uh, and also the intensity of kind of like where it starts and ends and all that stuff. So that's one such way you could deal with it. Um, I'm gonna push this over. Another way to deal with it is within Photoshop itself, if we go back, and uh, we can use a brush tool, like a gritty, interesting texture brush uh, to make it work. So let me come down here and like, let's see, I don't know if, this is gonna work, one second. All right, let's increase the size, like 480. Yeah, I don't think I like that textured brush as much. These are custom brushes that I have uh, for use within Photoshop, um, and they're very interesting. Um, you know, the type of brushes that you can use to make things, you know, just basically all around interesting. So let's try this. All right, let's increase the size. Ooh, I like that one. So what we'll do is increase this significantly. Let's go to like 700 for the brush size. All right, and we can kind of just have fun with it. I. Uh, and we could also, oh, you know what? We would want to do this on another layer. So let's redo that. And then we could do another one, maybe at a different opacity. So we take the layer opacity down, maybe to like 60%. And then, oopsie, let's get up there. There we go, there we go. So it just gives it a nice kind of gritty sort of texture. So if we copy this and we go back and we select this one, paste it, control V, there we go, although I don't think I was dealing with the same exact color, so in that case, I'll just go back, copy that color code, go back into Photoshop. I uh, will redo this, these two, let me delete that one. Make sure we have that same color code. There we go, all right, so redo, number one, here we go. Okay, take this one back, delete that. Okay. Copy that. All right, there we go. So there's different ways, obviously, just to create kind of a gritty texture. Um, I actually did a little bit of practice with this technique before, and I did create a little UI. So for this one, I have like a shoe store inside of like, like a neon shoe store inside of a, a warehouse. So it's a very similar uh, kind of idea that we have. and just to show you what a UI looks like in the context of a layout looks like here. I'll paste this one in over here. 
So we'll select it. All right. So here, one problematic area would be this um, window uh, because it, you can see it can kind of uh, creates it creates an issue of contrast between behind my home button. And so to fix that, we have several options. Of course, we could hop back into Photoshop and try to use like a generative fill AI like replacement for it or just any number of things, a clone stamp tool even. Uh, but what we could do as a real quick fix here, and you may not want to do this in your project, but we could just take a rectangle like this. We'll get our color that we've been working with and let's put it behind the text, but over the image and then just take our opacity slider down. So this could be one potential way of kind of just making sure we have adequate contrast uh, with that area above. We could also fade this down as well um, with a gradient. So we could take a gradient. It's already set up pretty good for us. Oh, we want to make sure that the logo is above as well. And look at that. So very, very cool, interesting visuals that you can create on the fly, conceptual, really conceptually interesting images. Like for this one, it looks like it's really highlighting the soul. So this would be like an interesting, uh, a really relevant graphic, so to speak, for a like a soul, like a shoe soul company or something like that, like ignite your, it's time to, ig to ignite your soul. Oh, soul, S-O-U-L, but we're talking about shoe soles here and they're ignited over here. This would be an excellent, like I love this right now, uh, an excellent use case. So the whole point of this tutorial, of course, is to show you uh, that you can really utilize, let me take it, get these things next to each other, uh, our newfound, relatively newfound AI generative image tools uh, to, to really create some designs that are just fantastic. As long as you, you know, th this stuff, adding the type on top of it is pretty easy and you have to understand some topography to get that looking good. Uh, but if you really wanna have the best bang for your buck, having an image that's really interesting, that's generated uh, on the fly with uh, things like Mid Journey is just absolutely awesome and fun, fun stuff. All right, everybody, if you enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.